Today, we're going to the Secret Waterfalls in the wilderness near Mismaloya, Mexico. Our guide is 10-year-old Nain, known as Cachito, from the village at the bottom of the canyon. Okay, this isn't child labor. Cachito is the son of our friend Chava, who we've known for seven years. We've been on a lot of great adventures together. Cachito is interested in becoming a tour guide himself when he grows up. And when he asked if he could guide us, of course we couldn't refuse. The waterfalls aren't secret because nobody wants you to find them. They're secret because they're in the wilderness. It's a 10 mile round trip through the jungle. We're not talking 10 miles of pavement and the trail is often difficult to find. The first challenge is climbing 2,000 feet straight up to get on the top of the ridge. Once on top, you'll walk a couple of miles up and down, gaining and losing about another 500 feet of elevation. While you're up here, take a minute to enjoy the view. That's the village we came from. This probably isn't a good idea if you're afraid of heights. Finally, you'll get your first view of the waterfalls. This is one of the few places you have clear line of sight to all of the falls. So sit back, take a break, and we're going to send it. And then you drop straight back down 2,000 feet into the canyon bottom. Once you get to the bottom, it's a combination of crisscrossing the river and a lot of bouldering.
And then, to get beyond the first waterfall, you have to climb along the edge of this cliff. Even when you're there, you're still not quite there. And you finally arrive at the second waterfall, which is the one the people like to swim in. Oh, the water's cold. You work it? Feels like a hurricane when you approach the falls. Okay, time to dry off and maybe take another look at these waterfalls from the air. The area around Puerto Vallarta is pretty well built up with tourist infrastructure. Fortunately, this place has so far managed to thwart attempts at development. There is evidence of those attempts. There's a helipad up here. It's evident the trail was once built for horses, but it was pretty difficult to maintain. And even more importantly to the locals, the villagers that grow up here, this is one of those places that they can escape from the ever-present tourism that their economy is built around. I, for one, hope it stays this way. The hike to this place is probably five hours round trip if you don't stop for breaks and don't spend much time at the waterfall. We spent a total of 10 hours in the day and we didn't even make it to the top two falls.
We also drank about three liters of water per person. Some people drink straight from the stream, but we brought a water filter just to be safe. And there's a look down to Miss Maloya and a look over to Puerto Vallarta. I guess you could fast forward now if you don't like waterfalls, but I'm going to make another flight from the bottom to the top, just a little bit closer this time. And now, just in case you wondered what it would look like to jump. Now, we're going to try to find their most picturesque angles. Thank you. 
Before we head home, Cachito came prepared to make a campfire and feed us dinner. To make sure we weren't hungry while the bonito roasted over the campfire, we started out with a dish of ceviche. And if the kid decides not to be a guide, he definitely could have a future as a chef. This stuff was fabulous. I'll try it first. Okay, you try first. And then if you want to put some with chol, that's pork too, okay? Lunch in the wilderness. And of course, they made sure to put out the fire so more trees don't look like this. All that hiking we had to do to get here, it's time to put it in reverse. Once we reached the top of the ridge, we were greeted with clouds moving in from the ocean. And the journey ends as we descend into the clouds. Mm -hmm.